On 22nd October 2024, I was privileged to be invited to the working presidential visit to Mazaboka. As a result of my being part of this presidential entourage, social media has been awash with maliciously misleading articles coldly calculated at tarring my persona in the collective public conscience of Zambians. Ordinarily, I do not respond to malice, but I'm compelled to issue an official statement to set the record straight and put closure to the matter at hand for the avoidance of any doubt. Those spreading falsehoods must get this right. I have not defected from PF to UPND. This is anchored on my firm belief that a credible opposition is crucially fundamental to any functional democracy. I am the bona fide elected member of parliament for Mansa Central. And under the PF party ticket, I intend to serve out my current term in this regard to the best of my ability and consciously cognizant of my absolute lord to the people of Mansa for the privilege they gave me to serve them. Further, I am privileged to be the chairman of the Parliamentary Committee on Parastatal Bodies, a position preserved for opposition members. I swore oath of allegiance to the Republican President and the Constitution of Zambia to serve the people of Zambia in general and those of Master Central in particular. I will continue to work with government to serve the people by providing effective checks and balances as we collectively pursue sustainable development, peace and unity. It is in this regard that I accepted an invitation to accompany the Republican President in the stated portfolios to commemorate the Jubilee celebrations for one of the country's most thriving local Zambian companies, the Nakambala Sugar Estate, at which many activities were launched inter alia the expanded outgrower scheme for sugarcane to enhance local participation in the growth of the Zambian economy. For all intents and purposes, this is the kind of investment we all must support because it does not fulfill our collective aspirations. It does not only fulfill our collective aspirations for sustainable development, yeah. but also creates both corporate and individual wealth we all desire. We can only exceed, succeed as a nation if we create commonwealth. We can only share wealth and not poverty, not acrimony, but progressive human fellowship across all facets of development. Truth be told, the trip was instructive in many different ways and revealed valuable benchmarking innovations. The company is embarking on to expand production while embracing the needs of the community. The trip further served as an opportunity to network with colleagues in the executive to lobby for specific constituents programs and share ideas on matters of national development. I must therefore appreciate the president for the invitation to be part of his entourage on this important working visit. Further, I was invited to community engagement where the president interacted with the local people and was privileged to address the community. My statement is on record for all to see. I did pay due respect to his, the president and I did say the following on Zambia's anniversary, 60th anniversary. As we celebrate our 60th year of independence, it is important that we reaffirm our commitment to our oneness as a unitary state. And that's the reason I'm happy to be part of the presidential entourage to reaffirm that we are one people and that we are one nation. To live in Tomwe, we are one people. At Jatane, to be in Tomwe, to be in Mchisi. Let's work together to develop Zambia. Thank you very much, Mr. President, for the opportunity. There is no doubt in my mind this was the right and proper thing for me to do, support the President, supporting the economic development agenda. Let us all pursue not a narrow, but a broad-based national agenda that speaks to the best possible interests of our people. In pursuit of this agenda, my conscience is crystal clear. I will always pursue efforts that deliver a developmental state that works for all. Let us abandon the machine politics designed to split rather than unite our people. Let us reject all the senseless and dangerous propagandists who are stealthily embedded in the belly of our body politic. At 60, we can be more proud. A diamond nation founded on the enduring spirit of one Zambia, one nation, cannot be narrowed to myopic black and white prism of them and us. There is a rendezvous of opportunity in the middle ground available for all of us as a collective. 
party colors of green and red, yellow and orange, white and blue, of any shade mustn't divide us, but offer us an opportunity to compete. Some of my colleagues, unfortunately, in the PF party, we have misconstrued the context of the visit and created a perception in various social and mainstream media that have defected to the ruling UPND. I repeat, I have not defected from the PF. My appeal to all is to reset our politics, detoxify the environment. Let's recalibrate our collective agenda to focus on service delivery and poverty eradication. Politics should not be acrimonious. It should be a platform for competition of ideas to serve our people. I do not subscribe to politics of acrimony. Let's create a critical mass of leaders and engender a robust, resilient and sustainable path to prosperity for our people by translating our natural resources into wealth. Let's embrace meritocracy. We have sufficient human capital to drive the agenda. If only we agree to work as a team. Let's not frown upon intelligence and hard work. Politics should not be about perpetual acrimonious discourse, I repeat. It should be a platform for competition of ideas to serve our people further. I want to emphasize this. I do not believe in the shared delusion that politics must create a barrier between them and us. We are one people. We are not enemies, but friends. We must not be enemies. Divergent views, yes, we'll have, but those should never create wars between us. These wars must come down. We need to start talking to each other. Dialogue is fundamentally important in this era of our political season. We'll provide checks and balances at any given opportunity. As we celebrate our 60th year of independence, let us not be rhetorical about unity. Let's be practical and ensure we embrace activities that promote unity, including talking to each other and not at each other. Compromise is not a dirty word, Teresa May said once, but a way of life that fosters unity and progress. By embracing compromise, we recognize true strength lies in finding common ground and prioritizing the greater good of all personal agendas. My friends and colleagues in the Patriotic Front Party, we need to urgently settle our internal divisions before we permanently disorient our grassroots. I reiterate the importance of a credible opposition to objectively check the executive for excesses and ensure accountability to our people. We must not cease to meet and talk to each other and work together. Happy 60th Independence Day.